Yes, folks, today there is something very special again and it is about the most cards. H that is exactly what it is about today. Because surely each of you knows a card that you can't stand. Has and that is exactly what it is about. Today we are looking at 6 cards that you definitely couldn't like. Maybe, if your card isn't there, no problem. Because together with C on the K and Julio we have 2 more episodes on their channels, so check them out if your card isn't there now. And I would say let's just start with the first card. Let's move on to a card that I personally definitely have a concern about, but we'll come to that later. But the card in question is Kastoroff and, yes, he has an axe. Oh yes, where do we start with him? Let's start with the fact that the card is so good that it is currently being played in practically every top deck. And no, I'm not talking about pure Kastorap, I'm talking about Jubal, Fen Smith, Snakey and Koshnia. Ah, uh, no, fair, that's where he actually belongs. That's of course because of his effect, because he's so flexible and universally usable. He can simply special summon himself before free. It doesn't matter whether the opponent controls the monster or not, which is already a huge advantage. But it's not just the special book that's impressive, no, he also has 2400 ATK himself, which is enough to get rid of some monsters simply by overrunning them. But we don't even summon him to attack. You can of course, but he has other very good effects, which is why you should special summon him. It doesn't matter whether you use spell. Takes a trap or takes a monster and yes, I don't have an axe, so I have a saw and so he is automatically the answer to everything because we can get rid of every problem card and we can do that just through him and we don't even have to use the normal summon. That's why this card is so incredibly strong, but we can still search for a card. Yes, how cool is that? And the worst thing about it is that he can search for himself. I mean himself hello, hello Kunami, there is a text missing. Every card says you can search for a card, except for yourself. Yes, and with him just forget it. The point is that we have simply got a card that we can summon again next turn or if that is perhaps too late, so the next turn, then we can just use it as a discard. Yay, I'm taking a discard card for free. And the special and great thing about it is that it is all once per turn. That means the banishment goes on your turn and on the opponent's turn. And we can simply use the search again on the next turn if he's still there. Because yes, this isn't a summoning effect, it's a once per turn effect. That means if the opponent couldn't out this card, we can simply search for another card and yes, him again. I have to calm down. Wow, no, I can't. How can it be that this card is still at 3? My little brother, yes, the dino wrestler, he's at two, at two. This card is obviously much worse. You have to sacrifice him yourself, without destroying anything. You have to summon him when the opponent already has more monsters than you, so that doesn't mean it's for free. Why or how can it even be that this card is at two and Fangry is at three? That makes absolutely no sense. So please, please, please limit Fenrir so that he can at least no longer search for himself. Or if you say, hey, it's such a pale card, then leave it at 3. But then please bring my dinosaur back to 3. It didn't do anything to you. Okay, okay, enough excitement. Let's move on to the next card. Let's move on to Marionette. My pulse, my pulse. Yes, good, I can be a little less calm there, because yes, the effect is stupid. If this card is special summoned, you cannot special summon any monsters for the rest of this turn, except for gimmick Marionette monsters. Wow, great. Do you notice something? No activation, nothing, no chain. Yes, no chain. And of course, before I get any more excited, I am aware that the card stands for a series of cards. For example, it stands for cards like Raid Student, Oaths, and all other cards that have a similar effect that say you can't order any more special for the rest of the turn. Some activate in a chain, some don't. Not Marionette. So yes, it stands for a whole series of but why this should be a problem at all? I can explain it to those who live under a rock here. And yes, of course I am aware that the card initially limits you, if there wasn't a card that this card would give the opponent. I already have nightmares about it. Yes, and that's how it goes. You see the opponent and you just think, yes, it doesn't matter what he does, because we can use the next move anyway. Then you see it. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then there's Marionette in the graveyard. The opponent just says Effect Albion. Yes, great. On to game 2. Card definitely gets your pulse racing, because the card just does so much stupid stuff and just doesn't let you play. Yes, as I said, it's just symbolic of all cards that can do that. Oh yes, and while we're on the subject, 
Of course not every deck can play this card. But one deck can definitely play this card and that is marked Despia and that brings us to the next card marked Fusion. Ha! Huh, marked in good humor. Yes, definitely not, because of course we know it all. We start with a total of 4 hand traps. What is the opponent supposed to do? Effect gate. Another effect also gate. Another effect gate, right? Er, another effect also a gate, right? Yes, what is he supposed to do, right? I mean, he only has one card left in his hand, so what is supposed to happen? Er, branded fusion, and the combo starts, and depending on what is in the graveyard, that is automatically the puppet lock, and the thing is, the card is already at 1, but how can it be that in a 60 card deck, 60 is the maximum of the deck? Yes, in a 60 card deck, this card can be searched for in an infinite number of different ways, Either we just look for it and add it to the hand, or we can even add it from the graveyard. Not retribution, it's just absurd. And the problem is that this card is somehow still stuck to the hand, because it's always the case when you play against a branded desk player that he already has this card in his starting hand anyway. Normal, I mean, yes, I could look for the brand fusion, so if I were you, I'd ashen, okay, then ash, oh, well, I already have it in my starting hand, that's why you always look for the fusion, nothing else, remember the fusion, diffusion card, fusion card, so, let's be clear, the card is completely superb and is simply the best fusion card, every fusion deck wants a card like this, because it's so overpowered, every deck wants to fuse from the deck and then just do a fusion summon, and it doesn't matter at all that we lure ourselves into fusion afterwards, because there are definitely worse effects that also lure you into fusion. I don't think it matters that this restriction is there. Above all because we were able to put the marionette lock on it earlier. So it doesn't matter at all that we can no longer make special descriptions from the extra deck, except for fusion monsters. With marked fusion, we also thought, Let's make the deck a little more extensive. Yes, that's a mess. Oh, mess. Marked Fusion is definitely a card that everyone has. Unless you have it in your hand, then of course we love it and I think it can definitely go on the banned list with Marionette. And yes, Brand Despierre has enough ways to fuse, even without this incredibly strong card. The next card is called From the Grave. I also think it's an incredibly toxic card. When the card first came out, it actually wasn't that good at the beginning, but the game has now developed so much that the card is actually only really, really good against hand traps and is mainly used for that. Because there is one thing we must never forget about this card, because this card is not once per turn and it says, choose a monster in the opponent's graveyard, banish it, and if you do, its effects as well as the activated effects and effects on the play of monsters with the same base name are negated until the end of the next turn. That means you don't just have it for one turn, but for two turns. Er, that means that alone is very, very toxic. And now on top of that comes the card. It's actually only on one and that makes it even more toxic in my eyes. But even our carters in Germany actually have a good opinion of this card. A little meme has crept in. And you can see that here now. Ring, ring, the grave, has called. That's why it's called called by the grave of English. Card called by the grave, which I personally actually wish would finally be banned. A card that I actually hate more than anything. So my personal hate card is here today. I'm excited to hear what you think. And yes, that's it for the card called from the grave. The next card for today is called SP Little Knight. Little Knight Little Knight. J. That's where the German accent comes out. I'll be honest, the card doesn't read as crazy as it actually is. In Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a lot of cancelling the activation of your opponent's cards and effects. Your opponent cannot activate in response to the activation of this card's effects. I think everyone knows that. Okay, that's definitely annoying, but SP Little Knight is a card that doesn't really do that much in comparison. Because when it's Link summoned and a fusion synchro Zyz or Link monster is used as material, we can choose a card on the field or in any graveyard and banish it. And yes, that's definitely pretty crazy. Especially considering the fact that it is a Link 2 monster that once again needs nothing more than two effect monsters as material. But our monsters are not allowed to attack directly on the turn we do that. This means that we cannot Odin on the turn we do that. So going second is not as good as it might sound. But that's not a problem, because it's a card that you don't actually use going second, 
which is what you might think when you read this part of the effect. No, you actually use it going first. Now you're asking yourself, huh, what's the point of that if you start and your opponent doesn't have anything on the field anyway? Quite simply, this card's sister, IP Mascarina, is quite funny and lets us summon this card on our opponent's turn. And since I Mascarina is already a Link monster, this also fulfills the condition that you can banish a card with SP. As if that wasn't enough, when the opponent activates a card or an effect, you can declare the second effect of SP Little Kite, which allows you to simply banish it or another card on your side of the field and a card from the opponent's side of the field. So theoretically you can take two from yourself, but in most cases you will take one from the opponent. These two monsters are only banished until the end phase, but who cares if you can prevent the opponent from getting into his combo and you already have a complete board in the next turn and can then even use the effect of SPL Kite again. I'll tell you honestly, going second is actually completely fair. It is balanced by the fact that you cannot attack directly in that turn. That means you cannot OTK the opponent in the turn in which you do that. And that's why the card is basically like ordering a castle on Wish or something. But in combination with IP the card is just completely stupid. IP is easy to build, SP is easy to build and since you already have IP on the field and are using it as material, its effect is automatically activated and you can simply banish two cards from your opponent in one turn with one card. Yes, one of them comes back in the end phase, but let's be real, that doesn't make much of a difference. Now, of course, you can argue about which of them is worse. Personally, I think that without IP, SP wouldn't actually be a card, i.e. not a bad card, but a card that would simply be reasonably balanced by today's standards. With IP, it's one of the stupidest interruptions that currently exists in Yu-Gi-Oh, can't we? Just ban both? For the next card, we need a pan. If we need salt, we need a goblin. We put goblin in the pan, then a bit of salt and we've got the goblin from the frying pan card. A card that is so powerful that it even got an ultimate pint. And no, not that weird rarity ultimate, but a real ultimate. The effect sounds simple at first. Pay 500 life points, negate the activation of a spell card and return it to the owner's hand. It doesn't seem that strong at first, but the card spells like 3, in case you don't know what that is. Read the rule book and that makes the card simply perfect for being able to stop any card, because it is like spell speed 3 and can only be responded to with another spell speed 3 card, i.e. with another counter trap. That means the card really can't be stopped with another counter trap and let's be honest, that doesn't happen very often because very few people actually play counter traps. That means he can't spell anything anymore, neither on the field nor in the graveyard nor from the hand, and that's pretty strong. There's also the special feature that the card is returned to the hand. So if a spell card goes into the graveyard, it doesn't go into the graveyard. In other words, we don't collect any spell cards in the graveyard for, for example, engager for spell striker, which could then become special. This means that we keep the graveyard clean, which is really good for the effects mentioned. You can see that it's a pretty good effect. The modern cards also say that you can only use this effect once per turn. This means that it doesn't matter whether the card was cancelled or not, because you can only use it once. This means that the card is wasted for now. So we simply countered or slowed down Epel with a card and believe me, the opponent would hate you if you activated this card. And I would say that I'm going to fry a few more goblins and that was already 6 cards. If you want to see more cards or the other episodes of the other two, then be sure to check out Julie and CK Phoenix, because the other videos have also appeared there. Yes, and I have nothing else to say other than I wish you a wonderful day and, as always, lots of fun dueling. E.